Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Burnout Brighter podcast. We're so happy that you're here. Guys, today with me, I have the lovely Darren. Hello, Destiny. And the amazing Benjamin from Freedom Games. Matt is unfortunately not here with us today. He got the COVID, but he's resting up and hopefully he will be back next week. But let's go ahead and jump in. I kind of want to just show... Basically, I want to just say a huge thank you to you, Benjamin, because I remember last year when me and Matt went through and like we talked to you and we interviewed, um, I think we we talked to the people who did Alucard, Alucard. I always oh, say Anna it wrong. Thank you. I always say it wrong. I'm so sorry. It's an absolutely beautiful game. And I think you were actually on that interview with us and, and talking to us and like we had such a good connection that we wanted to get you on. I know it's taken us forever, but here you are. Thank you for coming. <laughs> And um, just a really quick kind of explanation, Freedom Games is a uh, publisher. They have some amazing video games. If you haven't had a chance to check them out, um, you can also look on our YouTube channel. We played Dark Deity. We did a review for that. We also did Dreamscape, uh, which was an absolute... Yeah, Dreamscaper, which was an absolute beautiful game. So if you guys kind of want to check out some of the games that they are publishing, go. We'll put the links down at the bottom so you can just click on it and see some of the gameplay. They're absolutely incredible. We actually just had a surprise launch today. What? What? (laughs) We uh, we were able to bring Airborne Kingdom um, to Steam. Um, So it was formerly an uh, an Epic Store exclusive, and we brought it to consoles last year, um, but we were really happy to be able to get it uh, on Steam, really bring it to even more people. It's a super fun game if you haven't uh, picked it up. Oh my god, no, I haven't played it yet. Congratulations. I know what, since you drop that, we'll definitely put that down at the bottom too, so you guys can go check that out on Steam. And as always... We always say, even if you can't afford it, wishlist it if it's something that you think you want to try out. But let's go ahead and jump into this. But first, I'm going to start with Darren, because I want to know, Darren, what have you been up to? I heard that you like had to teach a class by yourself. Oh, God, yeah. I just, I kind of just got home an hour ago. Uh, I, I've been practicing to be a teacher for a bit, and uh, teenagers can be a lot to handle when you're left alone with them. Um, but uh, that went, you know... As well as it could go, um, <laughs> I've been trying to distract myself uh, with Xenoblade Chronicles. I finally finished that after like 130 hours, and uh, I'm on to uh, the new little side story at the end. That it's weird going back to a game you played before, but now there's new content to it, like an older game, mm. and it so it's like old but new. It's weird, but it's it's fun to discover something new about a game. You don't you don't get the opportunity very often with a lot of games to go back to it and be like, oh, there's more of this game than was there the last time. True. So that's True. pretty cool. That's dope. That's, li- that's literally well, I'm glad all you've been. Between. I'm glad you've been playing games and relaxing. It's not been all work for you because I know like you get into work. So I'm glad you've been like relaxing yeah. and enjoying the game because I know Xenoblade's like one of your babies. Oh, it is. It is. So I don't want to dwell on me any longer. I want to know what Benjamin's been up to because Benjamin, you're our guest. What have you been up to? What have I been up to? Um, well, working real hard on, on all the games. We have all, all kinds of stuff there, um, but I try and relax too. Well, I paint my nails a lot. <laughs> so that's It's my like yeah. at least once a week creative outlet, stress reducer. I just like put just- on something. Hold up your hands really quickly so people can see the amount of skill that this man has. Like Amazing those work are on that. beautiful. This one's not as exciting, but I how, lost how one. How long did it take you to paint it in a hurry today? How long did it take you to paint those designs? Um, this took me a while. So this is for um, on Instagram. A bunch of people get together to do like these collaborations efforts, um, which are either like themed or maybe it's like recreate someone's look for their birthday. And we all post on the same day. Um, so this one is like nail art telephone. So I was only able to see the nail art of the person who was directly before me. And I had to try and copy it as closely as I could, um, which was really difficult because the person before me looked just like, I, I literally couldn't figure out how they did what they did. Um, it took me several tries to even get close. So I actually did this over the course of two days. Oh wow. my god! Um, but usually something like this would maybe take like three or four hours. 
Right. That's dedication. Right. So yeah, you got. I'm excited. I just put on shows or movies and. Yeah, I love it. Like that's the first thing I saw when you came on. I was like, oh my god, whose nail polish is that? And then you were like, and I was like, oh my god, it's, it's nail polish. No, that's my combination battle station and nail salon. No, I love it. So you've been doing some nail competitions. Basically, well, not a competition, but kind of like a collaboration with other people. And what else have you been up to other than like working really hard? Because I know we've all been working hard. Yeah. Um, Wow. (laughs) I'm still I'm still living a pretty boring like uh, like COVID nomad life. So Mm -hmm. I don't really get out much. Um, I've been playing some games. I. uh, well, I don't know. I'll save I'll save it for later. I play a number of different games, um, oh, but okay. um, lately, oh, I picked up just the other day Heroes Hours, uh, Hero oh. Hours, Heroes Hour. Um, wait, what's Heroes that? Heroes Hour, yeah. So, uh, did did either of you play Heroes of Might and Magic three like back in the like? No. I never played it, but I know I know that one. <laughs> yeah, so I mean that's like a classic from that era. Yeah. It's like a um, turn based strategy fantasy game. Um, and so this is like a love letter to it, to really done oh, in like okay. pixel art format, um, and it really is like very, very similar. Um, they don't hide their inspiration, <laughs> um, but that's that's been a lot of fun. It kind of takes me back to that um, era. How, I mean, that was when I was like a teenager, so um, <laughs> it's been nice to kind of get like a little nostalgia hit, and it's got the really cool kind of pixel art indie style. Oh right. my god, I love indie. I love indie so much. Because, like, they're, like, not afraid to, like, do old school looks and vintage looks. And that's what I grew up on. So anything that has, like, that pixel, like, kind of art style, I immediately want to play. Even if I don't like the actual, like, gameplay. Like, I'm terrible at some games. Like, I was terrible at Dark Deity. Absolutely terrible at it. (laughs) But I absolutely loved the art style. Because I'm just kind of, like, kind of, like, brute forcing my way through through the game. Because it was my first strategy game, really, that, like, set up like that. It almost felt like playing chess. Like, you have to think, like, two or three steps ahead. And I was like, I just want to smash things. You know what I mean? <laughs> but thank you for sharing. Let's see. Uh, what have I been up to? You? I have been just kind of de-stressing. Like, February has been a very stressful month for me. Um And I'm just kind of like dealing with some things. But um, in order to do that, I've been playing, I don't know if you guys have heard of this game. I played the demo uh, Summer in Mara. Oh, no, I don't know. It's like a really, it's a really cute game. Um, But now I'm kind of getting tired of it because it's a lot of going back and forth and fetching things. And I was, I'm kind of disappointed because like, I feel like it had like so much potential. And the oh, art style is so dude, cute and everything. I yeah, I definitely it brought it up. Really cute. Yeah, it is super cute, but like everything is go get this for this person and do this for this person. And like if the entire game is like that, I'm going to drop off at some point. So um, I love the story that they have there, but I think it takes so long to get into the story that I've kind of lost interest what i did play is i played the demo for kirby yes absolutely so adorable oh my oh. god i love it i'm going to buy the game like it was the demo wasn't enough it was just enough for you to be like i have to get this game so that's absolutely what you were adorable. doing i was playing xenoblade one time and i saw destiny log into the switch and i was like what is going on i haven't seen her log into the switch in like <laughs> two years what is she doing? It was curvy. Yeah, it was curvy. And it's so cute. So guys, if you if you don't know, there is a demo for it. Go check it out. It is everything that we love about Kirby and more. So yeah. that's kind of what I've been up to. Just blown you guys, away. By have it. you guys sorry, played I, the demo? Yeah, I was just blown away by it. Have you played it, Benjamin? I have not, but I love kirby kirby's adventure for nes is yeah like one of my like top five all-time games i actually have an nes that i pull out like every couple years so i could just spend an entire afternoon playing oh kirby's my god adventure. i love that um, do you have so i'm switch? actually really excited to check it out i do yeah oh my god after the show go download the demo it's so <clears throat> amazing 
I'll download to play tomorrow. My partner is currently waiting for me so that afterwards he's going to force me to play Elden Ring and basically <laughs> make fun of me because I am really, really, really bad at Souls-like games. Oh my god, that's going to be fun. So is he just going to watch you kind of like... Yeah, no, I love yep. that. I mean, it's it's a fair it's a fair turnaround because I often will sit on the couch like reading on my Kindle and just watch him and make fun of him as he dies. So, oh my um, god, is that he is a like the perfect of, like, relationship. Oh, he loves them. He loves them. He plays all the time, and uh, and I'm just there giving like incredibly unhelpful advice, uh, forcing him to do things that he doesn't really want to. I'm like, see that crab over there? You have to go kill it. He's like, I don't want to go kill, <laughs> kill the crab. Oh my god, I love it. That's like the best kind of time to spend with a with a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a partner in general. I like to give helpful advice, but then I think I start backseat gaming because I get irritated when they don't like listen. No, so it's it, like really hard. There's something wrong yeah. and twisted <laughs> with the brains of Soulsborne fan, Soulsborne fans, and I can say that because I am a Soulsborne fan, and we just <laughs> really, really enjoy watching people who don't play the games just try and suffer their way through through them there's just something it's, and it's such not like, a hard game it, it's not like a sick pleasure i get out of it but for i just like watching someone try and like persevere I know, through the man. same i don't stuff know I man do. sounds kind of like a sick pleasure that you like <laughs> people I think I just saw this meme. It was like a video. I don't know if it was Elden Ring, but like they're on horses and they're fighting and they both have like just the sliverest amount of health. Like if either one of them gets hit, like they're gone. And yeah. so like he's fighting him and they're missing each other and he runs by and this fucking like, oh my God, this skeleton just like slowly leans over and gently lights him on fire. <laughs> and then it's just like, you're dead. Like he, the yeah, skeleton wasn't even right. part of the main battle. And I was like, I, I've never like raged quit, but that would have been it for me. Like I would have been done. Like, how are you just going to jump in on the fight? Like you weren't even invited. You know I mean? that's, well, that's what happened to me when I was playing the other day for the first time. So I'm just like casually trying to not die from this like wolf that's chasing me. And then out of nowhere from like behind me, some dude on horseback just goes, one right? hit. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> It's it's such Why? an intense game. I can watch other people play it, but I I know that I would get upset. So I did watch an ex boyfriend play it once, and he tried to run the whole game like a, I don't remember which one it was, but with like no armor on, and he had to fight like <laughs> some giant rats and. <laughs> He's like, I don't know why I keep dying so fast. And I'm like, because you don't have on any armor. Like, <laughs> You've answered your own question anyways, there. Like, come on. Right? It was it was fun watching him, like, die over and over. Not because it was a sick pleasure, but just because he was so dumb about it. And he refused know, to put on clothes. You might have been getting no, a little bit No, he refused to put on clothes. Like, it was... It was slapstick comedy. You can't run around <laughs> in a world where everything wants to kill you butt naked. Like, you can't do it. You're gonna die. Yeah. But... Let's jump into the interview. <laughs> Benjamin, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of enlighten our listeners um, about you? Sure. Um, so, well, right now I'm, I work at Freedom Games as the director of publishing, but I mean, it's like cliche these days. I've been gaming for my entire life. <laughs> Most of us have been. It, we love to hear uh, it. My, my father was a software engineer. So computers and games were like a big part of my life from like before I could read. Um, I actually learned how to read using like Reader Rabbit, like computer games. Oh my nice. gosh! Um, so like it goes all the way back, and yeah, and I ended up getting into the industry. Um, I went to grad school uh, in Washington D.C. and the program that I did there was called Communication Culture Technology and covered kind of the interplay of those three kind of concepts. Um, <clears throat> and I ended up doing all of my thesis research about um, online games, about um, what happens when uh, virtual worlds are closed down and what happens to the communities of people that are displaced from those worlds. They become sort of oh. digital refugees, um, which was inspired by an experience that I have. So I've been playing the same MMO for 24 years it'll be 24 years this summer it's called nexus tk okay um, it was nexon's first ever mmo 
Um, the original version actually still runs in is still running in Korea. Wow. Um, oh, I, I know with... Nexus. Okay, I was like, that sounds so familiar. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> so I've been playing that forever, but there was a period in time there used to be an in dedicated Indonesian version of the game, um, and at some point. It's like in the early to mid 2000s, maybe um, it like suddenly shut down overnight with no warning. Um, and what happened was we had a, all of a sudden in the American version, just tons of Indonesian newbie players who like didn't really speak English, had a very different kind of culture, you know, to how they played the game and how they approach things. Um, and it was really interesting thinking back on that experience about how over time our community sort of warmed up to that and started accept translating our clan applications into Indonesian and all that kind of stuff. And and now that's just like part of the DNA of the game is that there's this there is a large Indonesian um player base and there just right. always has been since then. Um so I was really interested in learning more about, you know, what happens what have happens in other situations where virtual worlds have have closed down. Which there's not a lot of them actually. Like there's only like been a couple um like major commercially successful MMOs to ever shut down. Like Star Wars Galaxies, City of Heroes, it's close to the end of the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what I did all my <laughs> that's what I did all my research on, which is really interesting. Um and um I also volunteered for Wikipedia. Um so I'm a big oh. fan of Wikipedia. Um I love I have always just been so inspired by the mission of making the some total of humankind's knowledge freely accessible. Mm. Um, yeah. I think the fact that we just have that with us all the time is just mind-bogglingly cool. Right. That's something we definitely take um, for granted. And as someone who is studying to be a teacher, oh, yeah. I am taking that for granted every day when I have to teach myself something before the kids find out. <laughs> oh my god. I remember when doing book reports, we actually had to, because I'm dating myself here, that we didn't use the internet like way back then like you had computers but there was nothing on the internet so yeah. you would still have to go like every every like household had like um i don't know if your guys had one but every household had like a, a like a set of encyclopedias where you would get information oh, yeah. that was like so dated it didn't even make any sense do you know what yeah. i mean yeah. No, because oh, these yeah. like encyclopedias that like your parents got when they were teenagers, right? From <laughs> yeah. some door to door salesman. Um, <laughs> or I don't know. We also had Encarta, right? Like the which was like oh, Microsoft's first like digital yes. Um, yes. encyclopedia. That's very like early computer era or early uh, internet era. But we still had floppy disks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, How many floppy disks does it take to fill the entire world's knowledge? Oh my god! Uh, probably a lot. A lot. Um, Four. Well, it depends they on actually. Be super thin, right? Good thing that they were really thin. I think it really depends on if you include yeah. the images or not. Because if you actually strip out all the images from Wikipedia, it becomes That's a pretty true. manageable size. Pretty. Yeah. I think you can put it on like a like a thumb drive. Wow. Um, or at least yeah. they actually have a version of it that is like a core set of articles. Um, that trims off a lot of like you know kind of fluff things just so it is like portable. Sure. Um, sure, sure. But, um, oh yeah, <clears throat> so I had an opportunity to get involved with a program that they had called the Wikipedia Global Education Program. And basically, we got kind of trained up on some Wikipedia stuff. I had actually never really edited Wikipedia more than just like maybe fixing a typo or two. Um, and then we went to classes and we worked with professors so that rather than write like an annotated bibliography or even a term paper, um, they would replace that with an assignment to create or significantly improve a, a Wikipedia article related to the um, the class. Um, and so I would go to classrooms and sort of teach people the basics of wiki editing, help them guide them through all of the like policies and bureaucracy that exists behind the scenes at Wikipedia. Wow. Um, and really just kind of pull back the curtain to because I think just demystifying how Wikipedia works, where information comes from, how articles are written. Um, is just so important and it becomes such a um, a more valuable tool especially for students um once you can kind of help give them that because there's always that kind of classic like oh don't use wikipedia it's not reliable or you know it's not an appropriate source to cite in papers and that's true because it's a tertiary source but it's loaded with primary and secondary resources um 
So that was a really cool program. There are actually still some articles from that students wrote, um, some that have gotten like really big and expanded on, which is like uh-huh. I think super cool. Um, so I did that, and then, and then I finished grad school, and I did not know what to do with myself. Um, and I, I moved in with I moved in with my best friend because I ran out of money living in downtown Boston, D.C. And um, just started kind of looking to figure out what I wanted to do. And then one day I was on Reddit. I was on slash r slash for hire. And I found <clears throat> a listing looking for remote contractors to do work on video game wikis. And I was like, well, you know, that's it's like a part time thing. But like anything um, yeah. that will help me out right now. Right. So I, I wrote in and I don't even think I sent a resume. I just kind of like bullet pointed like my qualifications and stuff and the next thing i know i get an email from ben robinson he just said hey would you ever consider moving to alabama and i was like yeah let's talk about it um and then next thing i knew i had accepted a position at curse um as a community manager for gamepedia um and so i then got to take all of that stuff that i had been doing for the last two or three years and put it together with the wikis and the video game communities <clears throat> and Gamepedia is such a cool project, right? It's all of these little um, community-run wikis about games. Everyone who edits wikis is crazy passionate about yeah. the topics that they they work on. Um, and we, I got to work with so many indie developers. We did, started setting up official wikis, um, and I spent like seven, the next seven, seven years, eight years, seven or eight years there doing that and kind of growing up with, with that website as it um, evolved over time. And Curse did other things. Um, for, I don't know, for anyone who might not be familiar with, Curse was um, like a media company. It ran like a lot of different websites, especially well known for World of Warcraft, like add-ons um, was a right. big part of the business and had a YouTube MCN, uh, but ran like Hearthpone and MMO Champion and Gamepedia. They also um, sponsor some Beyond. like um, uh, esports teams and stuff like that, right? Because I think I know them from their esports. We did have an e- we did have uh, own an esports team um, that later became. Um, it'll come to me, but I can't think of it. Um, but we, we spun <laughs> that off. I can't. I don't know. My brain just like uh, just. It went. happens. But, um, but yeah, no, that's where like my my Discord username and stuff is all CRS Benjamin because that was the oh, the curse uh, the oh, curse league okay. team like tag. Um, so that's and now that's like you know that's just my username now. So it's it's my experience at Curse really became part of my gaming DNA. Um, mm-hmm. What an amazing place to work! Everyone there is so passionate. We actually to this day we still have like a Curse alumni like Discord. Um, oh, and we nice. do like monthly meetups here in town or like, like online that. happy hours and help each other out with, you know, job postings and inspirational articles and stuff. Um, so it was really neat. Um, so how yeah, did you ahead. get, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Dan, were you going to say something? I think I was going to say the same thing you were going to say. So you go ahead. Okay. Well, I'll let you say it. No, there you uh, go. I'll, Cause I was just curious <laughs> to like. That's super interesting. And I, I'm i also passionate about wikis. And I mentioned playing Xenoblade. I would not have finished Xenoblade Chronicles if it wasn't for the Xenoblade wiki. Uh, there's far, t- far too much like trading with random NPCs to get high level items to like not need a Wikipedia entry. Um, but how did this lead you into freedom? Because I'm, I'm interested to see how you transitioned into freedom games from here. Yeah, so... Um, Curse was eventually, we traded hand a couple of times, bought by Amazon or bought by Twitch and Amazon, and then they sold most of the business to Fandom, um, and Fandom kind of absorbed, um, Curse into it in, in large part. So I've been doing that. And then, um, my boss and my boss's boss, who I'd been working with my same kind of leadership team for a long time, um, they both left the company around the same time. Um, so I was just kind of working at fandom still helping, uh, run all the, the gaming wikis. Um, and then they announced in August of 2020 that ta-da, we're freedom games. We're publishing dreamscaper. Um, and I was like, what a cool, we had actually published one game at fandom, a game called undermine, um, which is like a roguelike, um, super fun if you're into that sort of thing. Um, 
And we all really liked that experience, but from a, the business decided that it wasn't really an area that uh, we wanted to kind of continue investing in. So right. I found out that they had gone and, and fa founded this company together to, to do publishing. Um, and so I went and checked their website and uh, there was a job posting that looked like it really would be almost as if it was crafted for me. <laughs> um, but uh, it just was a role that I was like, okay, this is, would be great. I'd love to apply and see if uh, maybe they're interested in having me. Right. Um, come, come, rejoin the team, and we can uh, kick ass together. And uh, that's that's exactly what what we have done. That's so awesome. That it's almost like a seamless transition that you had. You know what I mean? And it's incredible that you were able to put two of the things that you're very passionate about and use that as a career. Like that, you're so incredibly lucky. It's so hard to like navigate that, right? Like you were able to use your love for wiki and information and making it public and, and your love for gaming and put that together. And I know I've definitely used it, especially for Stardew Valley when I was trying to figure out some recipes. Um, and, and, uh, I think I also used it for Eastward because I wanted all the recipes. I'm a foodie even in games, so, but we won't get into that. But yeah, no, I think that's like super, <laughs> I think that's incredible. And like, you are kicking ass. Like the games that you guys are publishing are yeah. so dope. They are so good. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what to really say. <laughs> no, I, I am, I get over, when I think about how many really awesome games we have, I honestly get kind of overwhelmed because there's just, there's a lot of them. Um, I think we have so far brought like is it like nine or ten, um, and we have. Uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. We have something like twenty games releasing this year. Oh, um, that's a lot. We've already, Are you going to do another showcase? We've already released how many? Two or three this year, and then it is just like downhill. I've got so much cool stuff coming. Oh my god! Are you guys going to do another showcase? Please say yes. Yeah, we're gonna do something. Um, I, okay. I mean, E three has been very quiet lately. Yeah. Um, right? They basically just yeah, were like, yeah. no physical E three. Stay tuned, and then it's been radio silence um, since then. So we'll see um, what happens. I'm sure. Right? June is always kind of yeah. It's always E three, whether yeah. or not anything yeah. is actually happening. Right. Um, exactly. So I'm sure we'll we'll find something. But we do have some really actually some really cool stuff planned. For, I'm excited because um, all of the games that you guys actually showed have been like top quality they've all been like really really well done well i can't take credit for that right that is the amazing creativity and hard work that our developer partners put in um and so uh i just i feel really lucky to just be able to um help help those folks and and mm -hmm. kind of take on the the boring stuff um yeah. and and you know let them focus on what they need to do um to be creative and and you know create these uh experiences for so, folks so i, so I actually a question like... i had sorry Darren. Oh, oh, oh. okay you let me <laughs> ask my question so now I, I will let you ask your question it's only fair thanks okay <laughs> so my question is kind of like how do you guys i don't i don't want to say vetting process but how how does freedom games choose the games that they want to publish yeah like how do you go about publish. building partnerships right yeah that's a great question um i'm not as directly involved in that process our co-founders really do most of our business development um but we do a lot we go looking for games where because we have kind of a a a unique approach to publishing, right? We have a lot of different titles. We help out in some very specific areas and ways that we are experts in. Um, and so we really look, are always looking for partners who we think can really benefit from, from our brand of, of publishing. Right. Some of that comes more and more every day. Now we get uh, like incoming requests with people reaching out to us because they're interested in working with us, which is really cool. Cause I can tell you that a year ago, People were not reaching out to us very often. I don't even know that we had a website a year ago. Um, <laughs> you definitely have one now, and we'll be putting that down at the bottom so you guys can go check it out. Um, and so our co-founders, they reach out to a lot of folks um, via Discord, and they just like, we'll hop in a Discord and find and say, hey, can we chat, learn about the game. Um, if they're actively pitching, right, we'll get all their, their materials, and sometimes there's demos and things like that. And really, just we kind of check everything out. We play the games if there's prototypes or demos available, um, and then we really just kind of 
a lot of back and forth just talking with the partner to make sure it's a good fit that we're going to be able to, you know, we both think we're going to be able to be successful because at the end of the day, publishing is very much about, um, right, mutual benefit, right? We want to work with people who are good partners and are like nice to work with and, um, you know, excited and enthusiastic. Um, and we want to find awesome games. And so we just kind of talk back and forth, um, until we've, you know, find whatever arrangement or, or plan it is that's going to be, um, you know, great for, great for them yeah. and, and, and great for us. Yeah. So okay. like, well, I, I kind of like that. Sorry, Darren. Dude, I, this is I, hard. Yeah. I have to explain <laughs> this to Benjamin. I don't know if you've listened to a, a previous episode, but there's a real, real <laughs> phenomenon called the Darren delay. Uh, and it's because Darren's internet is so bad that there is like a five second delay between everything I say and what happens, what destiny says, and it trips us up every time. Every Uh, single time. (laughs) I also think like, um, you are talking more than you usually talk, which is good because it means he's excited to talk to you, Ben. So I'm going to let him (laughs) go ahead and ask a bunch of questions and get something to drink. Go ahead. That makes makes me sound like some kind of like dog where it's like, Oh yeah, he's, he's not, he he really likes you. It is. Look at his tail wagging. He, Listen, he doesn't. He doesn't attach to people like this. I don't even have to like say this. that. Then you can go back and watch some of the <laughs> some of the podcasts, and you can see like this is like real talk. But go ahead, go ahead, Darren. Darren normally just sits back lethargically, staring at the screen, <laughs> being completely silent. Um, but uh, my, sorry, I'm going to make Destiny choke on her drink. Um, <laughs> yeah. In, in general, um, I'm kind of just curious about, like, in general, what kind of goes on in the life of a publisher. Because, like, we hear so much about game development, and I think a lot of people on the internet like to think they know what goes on at a game developer. But, like, we never hear about what goes on from, like, a publishing perspective. So, like, what what does Freedom Games do in their, like, day-to-day? Yeah, um, a lot of schedules and calendars and spreadsheets. Um, my core part of my role as the director of publishing is is essentially making sure all the pieces come together, um, which starts with laying out the whole map so we can see, hey, when does every individual piece of the process have to happen? Um, you know, we work with developers to set up their milestones so that you know uh, my team can review those, make sure everything's staying on track. And then if things aren't staying on track for some reason, um, which, you know, never happens, um, <laughs> software development always goes exactly according to plan. <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> then, you know, we have to, we go through and, you know, work through anything that we have to change. It's like, you know, hey, if there's there's a delay or, or um, some kind of problem, then it's like, hey, how do we fix that? Do we need to go find different resources um, to help the developer if they're... Sometimes people encounter technical problems, and so we need to send in someone from our tech team to work through that with them. Um, and yeah, and then it's you know always in taking new games, so that's a whole process of um, you know meeting with folks, introducing ourselves, making those initial plans. You know, so I can take and say, all right, this is when you think the game's going to be done, and so then we have to do all of these other because there's a lot of different steps that go into publishing right all the way from like you know setting up steam pages and getting wish lists going and all that kind of stuff on this side and then once you're done the game there's still a lot to do to finish the game you got to go gold you might if we're doing consoles you have to go through the certification process which um can be a challenge sometimes um and you have to have do all of that with enough of a gap that you know you can still send the game out to to media and press you know for demos and hands-on um, but then at the same time, um, oh, wait, but I totally just lost my train of thought. Somehow. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It happens. We do it all the time, but that's really interesting. I don't think I've ever thought about like, like Darren was saying to piggyback off of that. I never thought about how much work the publisher has to do behind the scenes so that we can see the game. Like I had no idea that you guys were the ones who helped set up milestones. Um, I work with an, an indie game company called Interabang. And so like, I see all of that stuff, like them setting up milestones. Um, but they're kind of like self-publishing. So I guess that's part of that too. But 
just being on the developing side and, and working like with the artistic stuff, it's really interesting to find out that like how much you actually have, how much publishing is integrated with the developing side of the game. Cause I don't think we talk about that. We, we really don't. We just talk about the devs, but we don't talk about the publishers and everything they have to do. So this yeah. is like really enlightening. A nice. Yeah. I think one of the, space. I think one of the biggest things that can surprise uh, developers when we're first getting things set up is just how long it can take from, Hey, I'm done my game to actually bring that game out into the world, especially if there's consoles involved. People are like, wait, what do you mean I have to have it done three months before it comes out? I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. okay. it's like we got to QA it, we got to localize it, we got to, you know, do the certification process. Like, we got a lot of steps to go through. Um, you know, and I usually, that's when I usually start saying, well, hey, let's start thinking about what are we going to do after launch, like post launch content. Like, that's yeah. a great time to be working on all that kind of stuff um, in preparation for the big day. Yeah. Um, it seems like kind of a thankless job to a degree as well, because I feel like, so many people online if if something's going wrong it's they're so quick to blame the publisher i mean it's usually our fault so um (laughs) (laughs) no no not really but um but i also i think part of i think part of our (laughs) yeah i I, we were both kind of like probably off guard (laughs) I, I actually do I consider it part of our role though is sometimes to take the heat right so sometimes when we've brought on games and we have to you know announce a delay or something right we'll frame that as um well it's usually what's what's you know what's actually happening which is like hey we just brought on a publisher we've exp- you know they're going to help us expand the scope or be able to do this and that we weren't able to before and that means we gotta just we need more time so we're going to take you know six months and so kind of so kind of blame guys it on act us. as um PR for the team as well yeah, we handle all the PR. Um, we help out with some community management. It kind of depends, right? Some devs are really active and engaged and just kind of um, natural at you know maintaining a Discord community and doing their own social media. Um, right. Other devs need a little bit more help in those areas. And so we kind of fine tune. Um, we like to think of it as kind of a whole menu of services that we can offer um, and then kind of figure out you know what different people need um, from us. So yeah, we do all that stuff. We actually, we work with um, some awesome, I'm going to plug them because they're great. Uh, we work yeah. with, um, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Stride PR. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where my brain is going yeah. on today. We work with Stride PR, um, their team. They help us with um, most of our PR stuff. And um, I know that you worked with them when you were arranging the, the, the demos for E3. Those guys are Yeah, they awesome. were on top of it. They were so incredible. Yeah, I love working with them. I cannot imagine having to do all of that PR stuff myself. So it's great to have awesome partners um, like them. And uh, they've really helped us um, get some really interesting coverage um, recently, which has been um, super cool. So my next question is, if someone was like, you told us how you kind of got into this role. um, And I feel like a lot of that was with networking and because you worked with some of these people before. So it opened some doors for you. But for someone who doesn't kind of have that background, but would really be interesting in working on the publishing side of things, what advice or tips would you give them? That's a great question. Um, hmm. <laughs> we stumped you. <laughs> yeah, well, I just, that's not something that I've really ever thought about. Um, I think it's really about trying to figure out what type of role that you would be interested in. And I think you would want to learn about it, um, you know, reach out to folks. I know I'm really happy pr- pretty much always to like um, just hop on a half hour call with someone and talk, you know, kind of share more about my experience. Right. Um, I, I've reached out and I've done that done the i've been on the other side of that too um and so i I kind of um so i think it's totally worth always just reaching out to people that are in the industry who have roles similar to yours and just saying hey you know my name's whatever and i'm interested in learning more about is there any chance you might have you know half an hour to to talk with me about it and i think a lot of i think you'd be surprised at how many people would be totally willing um you know generally we work gaming is a pretty friendly industry um I think it attracts mostly a lot of road of friendly people. I haven't met very many grumpy people in gaming. I think it's hard to be grumpy and and you know making video games for a little right. Bit. 
Um, right. So I think learning, and then I think just trying to figure out um, how to take skills and experience that you have, and getting creative about how do you how could you apply those, you know, in a in a in a different role. Um, for instance, we had um, uh, our, we, I hired a, a QA manager a while back. Uh, she's no longer with us, but um, she didn't really have a, much of a background directly in gaming, um, but she had some experience doing um, QA and um, UX like research and, and right. um, design. Um, and so she'd applied for the position because she was interested in trying to get into games and, you know, from talking to her and I could hear how passionate she was. And she had really thought about how, um, some of those different skills and experiences that she brought to the table, how those applied really well to, to the position that we were looking for. Um, and so I was happy to, to make, you know, offer, give her an offer and, and bring her onto the team. Um, she received an even awesome or cooler offer like a year later that uh, oh, congratulations couldn't have been turned down. So, so right. we celebrated as she she moved on. Um, but <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that that'll be really the thing um, is is to always be learning as much as you can about whatever it is you want to do and be thinking about um, how you can be starting to prepare yourself in in whatever whatever way um, that is. That's awesome. So. I'm, this is what I'm going to take away from it. Basically, research the position you want to do, see how that applies to the position that you want to do, and then reach out and try to talk to somebody who's like has a similar position within that company. Um, because I I know for me, like I wanted to get into narrative uh, design. And it's actually everybody I've talked to has said it's really hard to get into gaming. So would you say getting into the publishing side of things is as hard as getting into the developing side of things? Um, I don't I don't know. Maybe not quite as hard because um, mm-hmm. it definitely is different skills. I think, you know, the skill set that you're going to use in publishing is going to yeah. generally be a little bit more broad right i can definitely take the work that i'm doing now and i could go do project management not in gaming why would i want to do that i wouldn't (laughs) Um, whereas game development i think is like a really specific set of skills um and um so yeah i would think maybe a little bit easier and i think the other thing is always just uh shoot your shot right like don't not apply for a role at a game publisher just because you're not a perfect fit right if you're excited about it you know write that cover letter tell me why it's a good fit for you. Tell me why you want to make this jump. You know, what are you looking to learn from, from a position? Like all of those are things that to me make people appeal really positively. Um, Cause that's the kind of people that I love to have in my teams, people who are voracious, you know, want to learn things, want to do new things, take on new projects, um, grow over time. That's I'm lucky to basically have had like the world's best boss for my entire career. Um, and one of the things that, he's always helped me with was was continuing to grow and continuing to grow in my role and that's how i went from like a community manager to like a director at um Mm -hmm. at the game publishing so you know those are things i think those are uh what i would call like um like soft qualifications um that are really important in my eyes it's almost more important um sometimes to have those soft skills um than it is to like necessarily have um you know, just the perfect experience or whatever. Right. I mean, that helps too. Don't get me wrong. Right, but um, right, right. but yeah, I think finding all those really awesome things that you individually can bring to the table and and making sure you put those forward. I never thought about getting a job in publishing, but now I'm thinking about getting a job in publishing. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like I never thought about it, but now now I'm like that was like a great like I know you weren't pitching it, but like that was amazing because well, like I was like I do a lot of that stuff already for like our podcast. Why don't I just do you know what I mean? Like I never thought about it. So for some of our listeners, if you've never really thought about, you know, um getting into publishing, but you're already kind of doing things that, you know, kind of relate to that job and you still want to get into gaming like that's a perfect I feel like that's a a, a really good job to have because I'm a gamer but I'm not like a gamer gamer like I'm a casual gamer and I like to play what I like to play when I like to play it she says that that's incredible every week we ask her what she's up to and she pulls some game that I've never heard of out of thin air and I'm like how do you find all these games 
I like really weird, interesting games. And most of them I will find on YouTube just from watching other people play weird stuff. And then I'll go and I'll be like, oh, that's so creepy and cool. Let me let me go check it out. That's how I find games because I like watching other people play games. It's like one of my hobbies, which is a weird hobby. But uh, enjoy it. I, I don't think watching other people play games is a weird hobby. I mean, isn't no. that like Twitch? I mean, Twitch is right. It's, that's what yeah. it's all just people watching people play video games. It's a pretty big deal. I know my friends would be like, when I was watching The Witcher, because I watched this one guy called Witcher George. I'm dropping his name. Um, I watched <laughs> him play the first one all the way up to the third one and both the DLCs because I didn't have um, access to a PS uh, PlayStation at the time. PS4 or whatever. And yeah. that's when... Well, the first ones didn't come out on PS4. Oh, it was so PC. The first I, one was I, PC I, only. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I watched from the start all the way up to like the, the last DLCs. And that's because the show came out on Netflix and I got so interested in it. But I hated Yennefer. Absolutely hated her. <laughs> so I was like, maybe she's different in the game. So I spent over a year like coming home. And just be like, people would be like, that's when like Matt would be like, let's go out to like the bar. And he'd be like, nah, kind of tired. Gotta watch The Witcher. And <laughs> gotta watch The Witcher and watch this dude play. Like I would binge three hours of it. Like that would be my night and I would be excited. I'm like, I'm going to go home and watch The Witcher George play three hours of The Witcher. <laughs> so like, <laughs> that's what I mean by watch. Like I will binge an entire, what it, What other one did I binge? Because I couldn't play it. Death the, the walking simulator. Death Stranding. Oh, yeah. I binged somebody play, and I was so upset because I didn't realize it was going to be like a lot of walking. <laughs> it's a beautiful game, but like hours of that. It's, that's the, the game because I couldn't play walking. it. There's nothing else to it. But I mean, I love it. I love the walking. It's a gameplay first kind of game that, for some reason, also <laughs> has like three hours straight of incomprehensible cutscenes. But the walking <laughs> is amazing. You're a glorified mailman. That's, that's what it is. Part. I got upset when um, you had to go deliver pizza. I was like, what? Who's ordering pizza <laughs> like in the post-apocalyptic world like this, knowing you have to go on foot? But it How is, is that an option? Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and who's making the pizza? I didn't see any restaurants. But okay, sorry. <laughs> I go off on these weird tangents, and uh, so I'm going to pull it back. And the last question we are going to ask you, Benjamin, because we are really, really, we like to pull it back to mental health every time that we have um, a guest on, because that's one of the things that we really like to focus on. Is there a game or a series that ever got you through a really tough time that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah, I mean, this is pretty recently, but, um, you know, I'm a super duper social guy. I'm, uh, and after the first... Gosh, it wasn't even year or year. It's just six months of COVID, right? I was going, climbing up the walls because yeah. I didn't have anyone to talk to. I can only talk at my boyfriend so much before he wants to. <laughs> um, and so I don't even remember what exactly reminded me, but I picked up EVE Online um, again. I had oh, played for wow. like just a little while back in like 2013. Mm -hmm. So I picked up EVE Online again. Oh, they had put out the mobile game and I played like, 10 minutes of the mobile game and was just like, no, I just want the real experience. <laughs> right. Um, and I ended up finding, um, there's like, so I ended up finding a, a, a corp, which is like the Eve equivalent of like a guild. Um, so I ended up finding a corporation that is um, explicitly like leftist LGBTQ plus um, and just chock full of awesome nice. people who are so much fun to fly with. And so I actually, I joined up with them after they blew me up. Um, and <laughs> we were just like out, we live in wormhole space, which is like the wild, wild west frontier of, of right. EVE Online. Right. And yeah, they, they blew me up one time. And then I was just like, oh, that's cool. And I was like looking up the corp information. And I was just like, wait, is this like a straight up just like queer EVE corp? I don't know how much you know about the reputation of EVE Online uh, and its player culture. Um, but it is not one that historically has been super duper friendly to no. uh, mm. anyone who's not a kind of. It's very tends to be very right leaning, tends to be very male dominated, um, and it yep. tends to be pretty crude and toxic. 
pretty toxic, yeah. pretty toxic. Um, mm-hmm. And so the, our founder, the founders of the corp um, are two trans women um, and they explicitly wanted to create a space in the game that was not just like accepting um, for people who were um, LGBTQ plus, but was like explicitly like supportive. Um, and mm. so we have a lot, it's a, we have spaces, you know, where we can, people can talk and share things that are going on with them or problems that they're having. Um, everyone is super supportive. We have like zero tolerance for, um, you know, misgendering people or, um, or, and we just don't engage in political debates uh, about topics that are to us like settled, right? We're not going to debate right. whether anyone's right to exist. It's just yeah. like, right. Not not things that we talk about, even in our spaces that are designated for that kind of it's kind right. of the leftist part of it. Um, right. right. And that saved my sanity. Um, I started playing Eve. I was playing a lot um, at first, and I still play very regularly. Um, but it's been really cool. Now it's been like a year and a half, and I've got a lot of really awesome friends. I can't wait Aww. for PAX West in Seattle because half of my corp lives in Seattle, and I am stoked to actually be have a chance to meet some of them um hopefully later this year that'll be um really fun it's been cool to just share we all know a lot about each other and what's going on and um it really is a place where i've gotten a lot of support through the pandemic um having a group of people to to be friends with so um that's incredible i love that because i know like some like old fogies think that people online can't be friends like they're not your real friends but I will be the first to tell you I have made some of like the best connections in my life from people I met online and still have never seen in person and like they have been the most supportive um like endearing and just beautiful people and I love that you were able to find a safe space and in a game that does have so like is known to be uh toxic because we need that and it it's not fair that you can't enjoy the games that you want to enjoy without someone like trying to make you feel bad about your lifestyle or how, how we talk about this all the time and I'm going to get off my soapbox, but I'm really glad that you found a place that you feel safe in and that you found the support that you needed. And I think that's incredibly important. And when you hop on the game, please tell um, the founders that I think what they're doing is incredible. I really do. Um, We're all about inclusion and diversity. And I love that people are taking it upon themselves to create these small little pockets for for everyone to enjoy because everybody should be able to enjoy gaming. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so nice when we have because uh, I now am on part of our leadership team. I'm an officer in the corp. Um, I help with recruitment and just hearing stories of people who like come. They're like, I just found this. I've been part of these other places where I've never quite felt like like okay, it's accepting, but it's like and just how excited and happy people are to find us and to learn that it exists. And so you know, I always like to. I've then turned around. I try and give back by you know doing stuff for the rest to, to improve the, the corp and um, right. give back to it that way. So. No, oh, that's incredible. And I'm glad that you're like helping with that. It's always like pay it forward or like help fill the other person's basket. I'm in a group that's dedicated to black people who own cats. I know that sounds really <laughs> random, <laughs> but I feel at home there. <laughs> I mean, I'm a gay space Beautiful. pirate. You're a black woman with a cat. Like, <laughs> yeah, and you know, I know a lot of people are like, well, why are we like creating these places? It's like it excludes others. And I'm like, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. For There's like, plenty of other places wants. for other <laughs> kinds of people. There's plenty of other places that you can go. Do you know what I mean? Like, stop. I, but- I'm just super impressed. Like, <laughs> I, I, I want to say that like one of my favorite parts about this segment is people finding joy and comfort in the most unlikeliest of places and i don't think mm. i ever would have thought that would, would someone would have that kind of experience with eve and i'm so happy that you did <laughs> because you got to make eve a better place <laughs> yeah gosh yes and so like let's say that some of our listeners play eve and they're part of um the lgbtq plus community um and they wanted to reach out and possibly join um what kind of information because i don't play eve online so what yeah. kind of information could you give us to to help with that well you can always of course find us uh in game we are be nice inc 
um, nice. is our is our corp name, um, and that's part of our our culture is like not trash talking and, and all that kind of stuff, being honorable opponents. Um, there is a, a recruitment forum um, on both on in the Eve Online forums, but also um, on Reddit. Eve Jobs uh, is the name of the subreddit, and we post there very regularly with pithy titles um, about <laughs> uh, what it is we do and what we're all about. Um, and I would welcome anyone to reach out. Um, we are a slightly more advanced corp, not like necessarily newbie friendly, just because of the area of space that we operate in. Right. Um, but we do have like friends and feeder corps. So like corps that are more newbie friendly that you could start off in, be learning, developing some of the you know skills that you need and then um, and come and join the corp. But yeah, be nice, Inc. You can, um, part of the Prismatic Legion Alliance. I actually have these really cool, let me show this, why just since I have them Please. right here. I wanna see I, uh, we have this amazing logo um for our alliance and i had it printed on these holographic stickers oh my god, oh my god that's, that's so cool gorgeous um so this is our this is our our logo is the the purple galaxy in a triangle with the light coming out of it. oh my oh, gosh you guys great. are gonna wear those you should make patches, make patches. I, we have we have like a um like one of those like print order shops you can buy like oh. i've actually been meaning to buy a t-shirt um but i have all i I got a sp I got an email from like a sticker place that I've used before that was like here print a hundred of these for twenty dollars like way cheaper than normal and I was like all right yeah so I just <laughs> I've been meaning to get like a stack of envelopes and like some forever stamps and just like send them to anyone in my corp who wants them because um, I, I don't need two hundred and fifty uh, stickers with my Eve Corp uh, <laughs> logo on them it's kind of an impulse decision but no those and they came out beautiful like I love it well. Benjamin, I want to thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your stories with us. Like, I'm super, I'm definitely going to talk to you later about this publishing thing because I am super interested now. Um, <laughs> but if anybody wanted to find you or find more, at, find more, wow, I cannot talk. Find out more <laughs> about Freedom Games. Do you mind dropping your info, whether that be your Twitter, or whatever you're comfortable sharing with our listeners? Yeah, of course. Um, you can, of course, find Freedom at freedom.gg. Um, I'm always happy to, to have people come check out my Twitter. It's just at Benjamin Tarsa, which is my full name. Um, I hit a point at some point where I just like my full name is associated with my internet persona. And so I just, it's just what I use everywhere. <laughs> it is what um, it and if is. you're interested in checking out um, my nail art, you can also find me on Instagram. I am uh, yes. Nails by Benj. Um, oh my God, you won't, you you won't see now. this lovely face, but you will only see lots and lots of beautiful um, nail and art designs. Modeling. Which I actually, I have a backlog. I need to, I need to um, schedule some posts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, those are those are probably the main places um, to come seek me out. Um, and like I said, I'm I'm always happy to to chat with folks and um, learn more. I think that's how we, right, like you said, paying it forward, right? Like I'm always happy to talk to people because then I don't ever feel bad if I need to reach out to someone and say, hey. Can you talk to me right? about this, this Building thing those so I can learn? Bridges, guys, and networking. So, <laughs> like um, Sam Bridges from yeah. Death Stranding. Well, yeah. Well, here I'll I'll share this. I say the my number one rule for business development has always been if you can do something for someone else, and it's not going to cost you anything, do it. Um, yeah, because no, that's, that's always going to be building relationships, and so all of us have lots of different things that are so easy for us to do for other folks. It's like, you might as well just do them. If it's not going to cost anything, it's going to help someone. Um, Cause then, you know, that comes back around. I really believe it. I love it. So guys, what to take away from this. Benjamin is absolutely freaking amazing. All right. Um, he does incredible nail art. Go check it out. If you are interested in getting into publishing, he is willing to talk to you. If he has the time, just reach out. He's absolutely friendly and always be kind. Those are the five main points that I get from you, Benjamin. And I think they're incredible. Thank you so much for coming oh, on. A... I am Thanks sorry. for having me. It took me so long. But listen, <laughs> I was always like, we have to get Benjamin on. Guys, yeah. we have to get Benjamin on. Guys, remember we remember Benjamin from Free the Games? We've got to get him on. Got to get him so on. So I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that you took the time to come on and talk to us. I would love to talk to you again, especially when you start dropping some of those like little game nuggets that you kind of alluded to. We'd love to help you. What's the word I'm looking for? Not publish because we can't promote. publish. Um, promote. Thank you. It started with a P. We'd love to help you promote some of your games and talk about them. 
Well, yeah. I know y'all are like some of our biggest fans on Twitter. I see, yeah, I see y'all yeah. all, all up and down my Twitter feed, <laughs> liking our stuff and helping reshare it. So uh, I, you know, really appreciate that. No, I mean, like you guys have quality stuff and you, I think E3 last year was our first big kind of gig getting media passes because we all started in South Korea and like it's just kind of blown up from there. And interviewing you, like me and Matt, like it was one of the most pleasurable experiences we had ever had. Um, everybody from Freedom Games was so nice. Stride has always been so willing to help us. And we're still like we were still really, really small then. We hadn't made some of the connections. So like I really appreciate the culture that you guys have cultivated in helping like new podcasters and like smaller yeah. content creators. So of course, um, if we can help promote anything that you guys are putting out, we're going to be there, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> but Darren, is there anything you would like to say? Cause I don't want to cut you off. No, I just, no, I, you destiny, you said it better than I ever could. Thank you so much ah, Benjamin, yeah. for being here with us. <laughs> um and and supporting us and uh it's just been such a pleasure talking to you likewise Absolutely. all right guys that's it for our show please 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 follow the links below if you want to find out more about what freedom games is coming out with check out some of our youtube videos where we've done some playthroughs and uh as always thank you for sticking with us we love you and we will see you on the next episode burn up writer out later Bye. Everyone, we hope you have been enjoying Mental Health Power Up as much as we have. These conversations are incredibly important and we very much appreciate your time. But these conversations aren't the only thing that we're doing, Destiny. What is the second part to this? Guys, the second part is pretty baller. So we are going to be asking you guys to donate money and share the information about the podcast, but specifically about Guardians Mental Health. They're this great organization that uses geek culture, the things that we absolutely love, comics, gaming, video games, to kind of help people who are struggling mentally and mm -hmm. in a therapeutic way. And they put together these kits that they send out and you don't have to pay for these kits. This is one of the most amazing things about what mm -hmm. this organization is doing. They're sending out these kits, but Obviously, it takes money to print the materials, to get everything put together. And that's why we're raising money for them, because we want to help them so that they can help more of you guys. And Matt has got some amazing details about what you can win if we reach certain tiers. That's right. You just need to donate to be entered. There is no amount that is too small or too large, whatever you're able to do. $10 is what it costs to make these kits. So if you can do that, fantastic. If you could do absolutely anything, we would appreciate it. As we hit different stretch goals, we are going to be giving out different amazing gifts that we have for some amazing uh, people that we're working with. So please hop over to that link, take a look. If you can donate, please do so. And you might just win something cool for yourself as well. Because again, every little bit can make a difference in someone's life. So we thank you for taking the time to do so. If you can, if you can't, Destiny, if somebody can't donate, what's else? what else can they do to help? They can just share the information, share it mm -hmm. to your social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you have like a, a place that you like to interact with people online, share that information. And, and one of the things that I wanted to say, and I know Matt and Darren feel the same way, is we just want to thank you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Because for each one of you that shares or donates, I'm, I'm just going to say it prematurely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is so mm -hmm. important to us and it's important to our listeners. And it's one of the main reasons why we even started the podcast. Like not only was it about gaming, but mental health has definitely been a strong core that uh, mm -hmm. we've always wanted to talk about. So this is our first time doing it. We're super excited. We hope you're excited and yeah, donate, share the information, win some prizes, but most of all, just, do it from the bottom of your heart. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the prizes are just kind of like icing on top of the cake. Yeah. Exactly. So please be there for one another. Help us reach other people who might need to hear some of this because we know how much it's helped us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like Destiny said, we'll see you on the next one, everybody. All the links will be in the show notes below. Check it out. Bye. Bye.